Guys, you're welcome back. And I love the show so much. I said we end at 5 p.m., but we actually end at 4 p.m. So it's from 3 to 4 p.m. every single Monday to Friday. And I think it's time um, we just kick off rightly so. Um, this segment is called Star Buzz. Now, what we do on Star Buzz is we have the biggest guests, the coolest cats, the most outstanding artists, DJs, MCs, presenters, and we talk to them. And today, this guy is actually not in Ghana, but he does represent Ghana. Um, he has... Let me say multi-talented guy because he's into music, he's into comedy, he's into acting, and he truly, truly speaks his mind. Today I'm going to be speaking to David Oscar, but before we do get to the conversation, this is actually one of his music videos, so check it out. When we get back, we're going to talk to him. <laughs> Here's another one, David Oscar King, Soundboy on the beat. Yeah, very good, bad boy. Never gonna try to blow your home. Don't you never fall, never give up. Work as they strong, lift yourself up. This is how to live, this is how to learn. This is how to win and lift yourself up. Don't you never fall, never give up. Work on stay strong, lift yourself up. This is how to live, this is how to learn. This is how to win and lift yourself up. It's journey your life. You have to realize. It's not for the weak, it's only for the strong and the brave battle. This battle of life, you have to survive. Be strong and don't be weak. Rise up when you all do not stay back to Tell them, tell them, say, be smart and be wise. And oh, yeah. That man cannot help you when the child can't truly lift you up. Go on, go on and do you the best way. You know, yeah. Only you can be you in your shoes. Don't you never fall, never give up. You. Work hard, stay strong, lift yourself up. This is how to live, this is how to learn. This is how to win and lift yourself up. Don't you never fall, never give up. Work hard, stay strong, lift yourself up. This is how to live, this is how to learn. This is how to win and lift yourself up. The journey might be long, might be tough on the rocky road. Don't you give up, give up, give up. Don't you give up, give up. Yes, I know. You want to dig very deep, crash the rocks just to get it. Don't you give up, give up, give up. Don't you give up. You're missing the one you're blessed is to me. Be strong and don't be weak. Can you move, move, move on the heavy end? The greater when the wicked man are free. Keep your distance from them sin. Work hard and stay focused and show you who win. One day at a time, fortune favors only the brave. So keep your heart alone, cause they won't be so long. Never gonna try to move your heart. Jaja is where to live and where to move and make your being and sing hallelujah. Cause only him can turn your life around. Many will see and know soon. Believe your light will shine and care why. Who you underestimate today? Many people rise and many also fall. It will all stem out from your way. So trust yourself. You've got only one life, so live it out your way. Oh, 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 believe, yeah. In the beauty of your dreams, don't you never fall, never give up. Work hard, stay strong, lift yourself up. This is how to live, this is how to learn. This is how to win and lift yourself up. Don't you never fall, never give up. Work hard, stay strong, lift yourself up. This is how to yeah, live, yeah. this is how to learn. This is how to win and lift yourself up. Going. 
Allow me to tell you this, don't lose your focus. When the moment is yours, you never fall. It's a process and time is a factor. Never ever back down, never ever back down. Allow me to tell you this, don't lose your focus. When the moment is yours, you never fall. It's a process and time is a factor. Never ever back down, never ever back down. Tune into a higher frequency. Learn how to move with some emergency. Life is so short, no complacency. Go with your pace, but waste no time. What a man thinks of it is So, so let's I see what's from the beginning. So, so let's I Allow me tell you this, don't lose your focus. When the moment is yours, you never fall. Yep, and you're welcome back. To me, I guess, because this is still, you know, MX Live, live on MX 24J. That actually sounds very good to say. And that was the man, David Oscar, two of his music videos. Um, we're going to be talking to him, but when it comes to this show, I, I always want the best guests, the best interviews, and the people to talk to the guests with me. And I have a brother, a friend, um, a colleague, um, an entertainment mind, a journalist. Shall I add any more stuff? How come you change the house? I mean, like, shall I add any more mm, stuff, any more yes. accolades? Because you've done everything. Polish to you, Simon. How you yes. doing, man? Activist. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> How you doing, my brother? I'm bored. I'm bored to be you, here. Look, you're looking swagged out today. You look good. You look good. How's the family, man? Amazing. Nice one, nice one. So I'm going to talk to you more about mm. some couple of stuff concerned with entertainment and everything. Mm else but we have david oscar in the house via yeah. zoom actually so mm. not technically in the house but um he's been up to so much when it comes to his music um his comedy and he's very very outspoken that's what i actually like about him so um i think let's waste no time david oscar hello hi 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 jason how hi, are you how you doing man i'm good it's been so long yes how many years ago um, Shelly. <laughs> the last time we had a, an interview like this, like a TV interview, this was like uh, three years ago or four years ago, three yeah, years ago. Yeah, yeah. At the yeah. other side. I don't want to mention this, but you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Chala, I'm still waiting for the Momo. Chala, right now, we need money. I'm still waiting for my Chale, brother. <laughs> Chale, right now, right now, you know, because of... No, I don't want to talk about it. Okay. I don't okay. want to talk about it. It's okay. Okay, okay. We're we going to talk, talk about, about some other stuff, stuff not, right? Not on TV, you know. Nice one. Yeah. But, um... Let's get straight to it, man. I just want to say I'm very proud of you as a person and everything you've been up to. And MX24, even when we're talking about interviewing you, everyone you know, behind the scenes is like, that's the guy, one of the guys to talk to when it comes to entertainment and everything he's been up to. And what I want to kick off with, when it comes to you, you're known to be um, someone who juggles his talents very well. You know, um, I was saying earlier, comedy, music, acting, you know, as opinionated as you are. Is it difficult and how has it evolved for you Juggling these multiple stuff, man. Ah, well, okay. Uh, first of all, let me before I, I, you know, I begin answering that question. Let me. Um, you played the first song of mine that you played. Uh, Never give up. You know, I got a bit emotional about it because, as you may have heard, the producer of that track uh, with me an episode passed away just a couple of weeks back, boy. Oh. You know. So maybe before I even say anything, let me just uh, say uh, hello to Soundboy's family, uh, particularly to his wife, Aisha, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, to extend my condolence to uh, his family, you know, because um, I, I, I couldn't get the chance to be in Ghana uh, when he passed. You know, I, I said bye-bye to him when I was leaving Ghana. I didn't know that that was the last time I was seeing Soundboy alive, you know, so I feel quite emotional about that, but... Uh, like you all know, and like the popular saying goes, life goes on. Yeah. Um, so that's just about that. Um, how has it been for me, my journey? Well, I would like to say that it's taking um, quite a number of years, you know. And um, I think that is one attribute about uh, anything that is destined to be great, you know. A friend of mine, uh, when I first got here in Germany, said to me that, David, greatness takes time, you know. And I think over the years, I've, I've grown to really believe in this statement. I don't think I'm, I'm anywhere yet. You know, it's still a, an evolving process for me. Uh, but one thing I can say for sure is that it's really taking uh, quite some time. You know, it's taking years uh, to be where I am. And so as a way of maybe churning out a little advice to uh, the younger generation listening to us now, um, if you are looking for quick fixes, you know, then maybe this type of business is not for you. Yeah. You know, because if you really want to, uh, uh, I would say, 
deliver and make a good impact in, in this line of business, you would have to be able to have supreme patience, you know? Supreme patience because uh, today it might be your time, tomorrow it might be the time of another person. And uh, ultimately, what you should seek to do as an artist, uh, regardless, regardless uh, of whether you're doing comedy or music or, or some sort of acting, you know, what you should seek to do is to be able to create um, um, art that will last a span of time, you know? Yeah whether uh, be it music, be it uh, uh, any art form that you are into, your, your, your mindset should be that I want to be able to create something that will last a span of time. Yeah. I should be able to, you know, pick up your music. And I'm talking to those who listen to us. I should be able to pick up your music today and pick up that same music 10, 10 years from now and yeah. still be able to, you know, get some vibe out of the music, yeah. get the message, you know. So for me, really, it hasn't been about quick fixes or trying to speed up and get to some point. No, it's just been an evolving process. And even as I'm sitting here today, I still have dreams and hopes of going back to school, if you know what I mean. Wow. Uh, because years ago, it was, hey, I want, to, I want to get into music. Or I got a dream, I got an inspiration to be able to start music. I did. For me, now, that dream is dead, you know? The next one. Where's the next one? And to me, <laughs> apart from staying creative and creating music for my fans and creating music that will speak to generations to come, um, I still have dreams of, uh, you know, uh, uh, developing my human capacity, you know, by, by, by going to school and learning something new and, uh, you know, getting into something else apart from the music, getting into some IT uh, and so on and so forth. That is a whole conversation for another time. So, yeah, yeah I would say Man. it's taking... Nice one. Yes, but eventually uh, we've been able to make some headway yeah. in this project. Yeah, that's yeah, what's, and that's what's that's important. incredible. I mean, you work with Sasha Mali, man. Looking at your love for Bob Mali, how was that experience? It must have been big for you. <laughs> it was big, you know. I, I should put it on record. It's actually one of the biggest things uh, I've had to experience doing yeah. reggae music, you know, because uh, not just for my, not just because of my admiration for Bob Mali, but you know, Sasha Mali is. Uh, it's a household name in Ghana, right? Yeah. And he's he's uh, he's an international artist. I mean, who doesn't know Shasha Mali? Except maybe the younger ones coming who haven't heard his music. But uh, growing up as a young chap, you know, in the city of Kofuridia, uh my first encounter with Shasha Mali was when he featured on this uh, John Hopkins. Uh, it was a track that they did, uh, you know, a campaign for AIDS or so, AIDS against AIDS. You know, you had Black Prophet on that record too. There was Reggie Rockstone. There was. Uh, a couple yeah. of other people, you know, and Shasha yeah. was the one who did the hooks and the chorus. Right. That was my first encounter with him. And years later, to be able to get into a position where I was able to collaborate with him musically, you know, I think that was, uh, it was, it was, it was a, a worthwhile experience, you know. Yeah. I hope that maybe one day in the future we can get to talk more about it, what went into it and all yeah. of that. But for me, it was quite a, nice an one. encouraging experience, you know. It yeah. tells me that, I'm on a good path. I, I should just keep going. And I am yeah. forever grateful to Shasha Mali for yeah. the opportunity he gave me, you know, to be able to work with him because not only uh, did he avail himself for us to do a, a record, he didn't charge me a dime. Wow. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shasha Mali didn't <laughs> charge me one peswa to do that song with me. And for me, wow. it's mind-blowing, you know? So that's, the, that's, wow. that's all I can say about it for that's now. A, that's um, a big story. The journey right still there, continues. Man. That's, that's a know? big story. And we're definitely proud of you. One of the biggest collaborations when it comes to um, Ghanaian international, let me say, um, collaborations, because Sasha Mali is one of the biggest. Now, I have my next question, and I'm going to involve Kobi Che in this. Kobi Che is in the studio. Uh, okay. Shall I say hello? Kobi Che, hey, say hello. Shouts to, shouts to Kobi Che. I only know Kobi Che on, on the internet. I know Kobi Che on Facebook. <laughs> Kobi Che, yes, yeah, star, on bro. On Instagram and on Twitter. You know, he's a big blogger, and yeah. um, Kobi Che, I really do appreciate the work you do in Ghana, you know. Mm -hmm. You are an inspiration to many of the young bloggers yeah. in the system, you know. Mm -hmm. There was a time I interacted with a young blogger, and I'm, I'm proud to say you were one of the reference points I made for him. Wow. You know, I, I said to him, look at the future of what you are doing. What do you, where do you want to take what you are doing, mm -hmm. say, in five or ten years, you yeah. know, and you are a blogger. Do you even have a blog? Do you know what it takes to own a blog, to have a blog? You can start on uh, WordPress or wherever, but eventually to be able to have your own website and run, look at the likes of, and I mentioned Kobi Che, I mentioned uh, uh, others, you know, but today the focus is on Kobi Che, so I don't want to... <laughs> <laughs> super, super, <laughs> super, 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 of course, awesome awesome. introduction right there. But um, you, Oscar, one thing I love about you is that you speak your mind. You say how it is. <laughs> and that's how you've always been, you know, since I've known that's I how you've always been. <laughs> and the guy in the studio right now, he's the same way. He speaks his mind, like his teeth. One time I asked him, do you tweet yourself? And he's like, yeah, I tweet all these myself. Um, you said, um, not, 
Okay, I don't want to say not too long ago, but you said um, you introduced comedy into Ghana. Do you still believe that? Before I get to the question. Uh, yeah, that question, that question is a little bit problematic because I don't really <laughs> remember seeing anywhere or on any platform that I introduced yeah. comedy in Ghana. Hey, that's yeah. a big statement. That, that I couldn't like... have been the one who introduced comedy so, in Ghana. So please clarify. Had... Since you're here, clarify what you meant. Because a lot of your I fans think, are I like, think... you don't get credit for it. Yeah, I think what you probably may be referring to uh, is to do with uh, stand-up comedy, you know. And let me just give you a little bit uh, uh, genesis. Like, let me chronicle it a little bit. I grew up watching the likes of uh, Waterproof, right? We, yeah. We'll be listening to cassettes of Waterproof, uh, Santo, uh, and Penny Judas, you know. I grew up watching these people. And then uh, along the line came... Uh, what we what we what we've come to describe as slash slash comedy. I mean, concert. The likes of uh, Bob Okala, and Komode, uh, Aben Kwai, and all those guys. You know, this was my sense of comedy. What comedy was growing up, right? Yeah. And then I got into the university, and it was there that I realized that oh, this same art form that I had been admiring growing up as a kid, you can actually use English. You know, because some of us, we don't speak the tree, like, very prolifically, if you, if you know what I mean. So it was a bit interesting to my mindset growing up that, okay, you can also use English to do this type of uh, art form too, you know? So when I got into it this way and I got exposed, exposed to the art form this way, that was when I also got exposed to the likes of um, Tommy and Unforcing, the likes of uh, Fritz Buffo, Honorable Fritz Buffo, I mean. You know, KSM was even a later addition, you know. I must have been in level 300 or somewhere like that before I also got a sense of what KSM was doing. But what I realized was that KSM was more of a satirist, you know, although he employs the method of a stand-up comic in a way because he's on stage and he's dealing with the crowd. But he takes it extra, I mean, he takes it the extra mile because he has a set on the stage. And he's, if you watch him critically, you realize that he's actually, he's, he's acting a script for you, you know, which is where the difference is. Because for stand-up comedy, there are so many branches and there are those who are very good with improvisation. They don't even need the script. They can just come onto the stage and they'll just be picking on issues and materials happening around the performance area. And then they can use that to, to tell jokes. They can just joke about things like that. And then you are laughing. For me, that is even one of the highest bars in, in stand-up comedy. So with respect to the question, I think I must have been referring to or how you heard it or where you heard it. We must have been talking about stand-up comedy because yes, of course, I like to be uh, I, well, I, like you said, I, I don't think I get credit for it much, you know, and maybe that's also another conversation for another time because it, in my experience, what I've come to realize about the Ghanaian, in my experience, and I'm not saying this is a general thing, I'm only talking about my experience. Sometimes for some people, and it doesn't really apply to everybody too, you know, there are very good ones out there, but, but for sometimes for some people, it's, it becomes for whatever reason, it becomes difficult for them along the line to acknowledge maybe the little help or the little support they got from mm. somebody along the line, you know? Mm. That is where I find it a bit problematic because now when these people tend to, you know, have platforms, either because they don't like you or they don't want to acknowledge the fact that you also played a certain critical role, you know, that really took stand-up comedy from where it were to the heights that we are all seeing today. Either because the person doesn't like you much or, you know, I mean, I, I, I can't say for sure. People tend to overlook some of the roles that some of us play. Listen, let me say this. At once upon a time, as far as Ghanaian comedy, Ghanaian stand-up comedy, and I must be very specific here, is concerned, you needed a certain character like David Oscar who wouldn't koto to the dictates of the system at the time because at the time, I had a lot of money to spend because I was doing TV and I was earning money. So I was able to organize shows around the country. We did a show in Kofredi and back twice. We did a show in uh, Cape Coast. We did a show in Takrade. Uh, wow. And this is minus the shows we staged on several campuses around the country. We went to Tech, Legon several times because that was where I was, you know? So all these things, all these things were part of the mix. It became a part of the mix of the story of Ghanaian stand-up comedy. So if you take me out of the equation, you wouldn't have a Foster today, you wouldn't have a DKB today, you wouldn't have an Augustine Dennis today, you wouldn't That's have a Jacinta today, you wouldn't have a Chemical deep. today, you know? So <laughs> I think when we are 
telling the story, we just need to be able to situate the characters very well. Once upon a time, at a time when I was doing all these things, there was not a single sponsorship for any Ghanaian comedy event or comedy special or anything of that sort. The only, uh, the only big comedy stage we knew was The Laughs, which is a Chatterhouse platform. And of course, if you are somebody who is fighting against the system, you don't expect to be liked so much by the system, you know? Today, there's no beef, there's no fight, but I'm just telling a story. Yeah, know? yeah. So for me, personally, it was out of, in a way, the rejection that I suffered from the laughs, which drove me to start organizing my own corporate comedy series. Yeah. And thank God, I was at Legon, and I knew a lot of these boys who were all trying to, yeah. you, know, you know, get into the arts. Because don't forget, I was... I was the first in the series. I became a Ghanaian stand-up comedy icon when I won stand-up, uh, you know, uh, uh, stars of the future, you know? So yeah. if I had just relaxed on my oars and said, okay, well, I am the known comedian, so forget about everybody else, then yeah. you wouldn't have all the initiatives I had to put together just to be able to project the same Ghanaian comedians who were there at the time, but who were not getting the big platform to be on because at the time, the narrative, if you remember, was that there are no comedians in Ghana. And then after some time, when my platform started growing bit by bit, the narrative changed from there are no comedians in Ghana to Ghanaian comedians are not funny. I mean, <laughs> and this was the yeah. cause of the, Yeah, you I'm, know, I'm, and I'm, this was I'm, the cause of some of the I'm, I'm getting the genesis of what you're saying, but thinking about Great. it the way like you've explained it now is actually very deep. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think you're taking anything away from any comedians that are out there. And comedy in Ghana has become a very big conversation because we are like, want music to get to a certain place. It's not even there. And people are thinking, why should we give comedy that space? I mean, looking at everything Oscar said right now, mm -hmm. it making so much sense mm -hmm. from his perspective. Mm -hmm. Again, not taken away, I'm assuming, from what he's saying, from any other community. What's your take on this? And is there anything you want to ask based on what he's um, saying? So yeah, so first of all, let me just comment uh, him on his music. Um, like he mentioned, his music is timeless. And if you want music to be timeless or stand the test of time, your music composition, you have to get it right. Your music arrangement yeah. and the production and the lyrics and everything. So when you listen to that particular record that you played, it is timeless record. Because yeah, a lot of music that comes in the system, disposable music, it comes in a few time. Yeah. I mean, you, 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 you don't want to hear again. So big shout out to him on his music project. And again, I think that he mentioned gratitude. And it's not just about few people. I think generally, the majority of Ghanaians don't know how to show gratitude. Because, mm. for instance, look at what he's done. The experience, I mean, I've known uh, <laughs> Oscar for, for, for days, like for years. Yeah. And I know yeah. his contribution in comedy. Yeah. These days, you watch the new guys go on platform and they ask them, who inspired you? Who are the people that, I mean, contributed to that industry? And they don't mention his name. That's crazy. But why is that so, though? You understand? Kobe? I mean, so, behind the scenes, <laughs> why do you think that's the case? Because um, it doesn't make sense. So I feel that because sometimes he comes out to tell, I mean, to say what it is. So oh, probably... Okay. They or is it, is it, could it be because social media wasn't as strong back then? Could that be a factor? Uh, okay, so time and season. So maybe if... But you have to also educate the nuance. You mm, understand? Yeah. So the more you talk about Oscar, to mention and give him the credit and the gratitude, now the new guys also go back to check yeah. that, oh, there was a certain Oscar. Yeah. Now, I want to ask him this question from my point of view. Um, Mr. David, uh, the new trend in Ghana is the stand-up comedy and that of skits. Mm. Now, for you... I have always uh, had conversation with uh, comedians, and I told them that, look, if you're going to build your brand as a stand-up comedian, build that. If you're going to build a brand as a skit creator or content creator as a skit, build that. You can't just be adding. Professionally, mm -hmm. stand for something. Because your, your side perception is, oh, we're here, Jimmy. We're here, we're here, Jimmy. Yeah, like, everyone is a comedian <laughs> now. If you think about exactly. it, Oscar, like, everyone I is a comedian. I remember going into skit and skit and skit <laughs> and skit. So for you, number one, how are you going to position that industry, that should they combine it? Or if it is stand-up comedy, they should just fit into that industry or mm -hmm. into that sector. Again, let me just box all of them into one. Again, when you watch the Oscars and the BETs, they have a way of employing comedians to be like a co-MC or like the main MC, not to drag the show. For you, over the years, I've seen that we... Yeah. I, I think we, we just watched a three music award yeah. a few weeks ago, and they had comedians coming uh, on a segment to just create something. Yeah. But 
over the years, when you watch the BET and Oscars, mm. we have comedians. Like Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart. He's doing his thing. So please answer this for us. Yes. We want to how, do we do, how do we push <laughs> the industry? I mean, just answer all yeah, this. Please answer these two questions. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you so much for the question. Um, I think that if, like you said, Kobe, uh, the education should be more, you know? Mm. Like, this platform, for me, is a very important platform, at least having the opportunity to speak about this, this whole subject matter, you know? Mm. Somebody is hearing us for the first time today who probably may not be privy to this story, and the person is going to learn something from here. So it's all part of the mix. Mm. So I appreciate the platform so much, mm. you know, and the opportunity to be able to educate the young ones listening to us. Mm. First and foremost, I would say that, one, the media, I mean, Ghanaian media, you people, the bloggers and the people who, who I mean, the gatekeepers, those of you who are the tastemakers and, and, and basically the people who can highlight what the comedians are doing. First and foremost, let's not put so much pressure on the comedians. One, I mean, if you look at the likes of Chris Rock, Eddie Murphy, all of these guys, when they started off as comedians doing stand-up comedy, they had skits, they were doing skits. Mm. If you go on the internet right now, you say you find them, they all had skits, they did but you see, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a certain segment of comedy. For me, it's not really new, because when I was hosting Laugh a Minute those times, we were doing skits. We were doing skits. Some of, that, some of the time, we'll go out and film skits, you know? Except that, like Jason said, social media was not very strong at the time. And so most of the things, you know, we'll do, produce them in the studio, and then it's gone. But today, anybody picks a smartphone, and they are streaming live. If, even if you are aware or not, somebody could be recording you from some corner and something that you are doing that was not even intended to make somebody laugh could be funny to somebody watching, you know? So first and foremost, let's not put so much pressure on the comedians. Let's, let's rather educate the audience to understand that there are different branches under this whole big umbrella called comedy, right? The decision to do stand-up comedy has to come from the comedians themselves, from the comedian, him or herself, you know? Because for me, you know, you need to be able, you need to be a very intelligent person to be able to craft some set of jokes and stand on stage and crack them for people to laugh, especially, you know, just to do with ourselves. How, how, you know, how absurd some of the modern, some of the modern absurdities of Ghanaian life, etc. you know? So it's a decision that the comedians themselves have to take. Are you, do you think you have what it takes to be able to take your skits, your skits, you know, a step further by becoming a stand-up comedian? And in this bracket, we are not talking about people who are just, you know, quote and unquote, just fooling for laughs. No? <laughs> Stand-up comedy is a critical genre of mm. business, a critical genre of comedy, where if you don't have the gap, one, if you don't have the intellect, two, if you are not primed for it, you can't do it, you know? And you see, it evolves. Today, some subject matter might, might be funny to us, but tomorrow, if you try to joke about the same subject matter, it might offend somebody. I mean, we all know what has happened in the, in the case of Chris Rock and Will Smith on the Oscars. Let's not go into that, you know? So if you, are, if you become a stand-up comedian, you have to know that unlike a musician who would have a hit song today and can perform that hit song on 10 different platforms and get the same reaction of people jamming and jiving to that record, if you are a comedian and you write one hit joke, that is your end with that joke. <laughs> Because the mere fact that that joke is a hit joke means that you can't go to another location and perform the same set of joke and expect the same kind of laughter. Am I making some sense yes. here? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, makes, it makes sense. That is why, that is why stand-up comedy is, for me, the most difficult aspects, the most difficult aspects of all the genres and, you know, under the big umbrella of comedy. If you feel, say, you know, you, you can also, you know, collaborate with producers, not producers, writers. We, have, we call them gag writers. In Ghana, our, um, what do you call it? Our industry is not so matured as it were. Uh, let me also make reference to the Three Music Awards thing you talked about. I didn't really watch it, but I heard about it, you know. Can we take it a step further to get to that point where you would actually have serious gag writers behind the scenes who collaborate with these comedians to script the set mm. for them for each opening? Maybe when we do one hour presentation, we'll do a set and then maybe the next 30 minutes we'll do another set. This is intellectual. This is production. This is mm. script writing. It's not, if you leave it for comedian Obi alone, he will just come and have the space and believe that the space has been given for him to be telling some pieces of jokes mm. or try to synchronize and put a yeah, thing yeah, yeah. together. He will do it his own way. But the next yeah. step further is to be able to encourage those people out there who are able to write. And look, I think that if you open your eyes very clearly, you would find them on social media. There are some yeah. people who have very good senses of humor who might not even know that with the right 
harnessing of this potential, they can become gag writers. They can just write for comedians and earn money out of that. Mm. For me, I think that is one spot where the Nigerians beat us. Because look, the names you hear, the basket mouse and the, the rest, most of them have worked with gag writers. Some of them have like 10 guys, 15 guys writing various things for them. So if you leave that bit yeah. alone to the comedian and pretend that, okay, yeah. this is our you know, uh, savior when it comes to stand-up comedy, you'll be very disappointed along the line. Yeah. So, Kobite, you asked for me to make it make an input which will yeah. help us build and develop this industry. Yeah. We have come of age as Ghanaians. You know, yeah. we, we need to be able to start thinking about it this way because the industry can expand if I only agree. we can plug these things into I it. I, I mean, agree. I don't see the reason why if, uh, you know, Sadiq and his people, when they are organizing their thing, apart from giving the space to comedians, I don't see the reason why they cannot also yeah. seek out good gag writers who can collaborate with these comedians yeah. and write beautiful sets for each opener. I th I you know, and it can said, only take yeah, what we are doing yeah. forward yeah. and up. He, if he you know said everything, I mean. yes, basically, yes, about... Yes. Yes. This is just the bit there. I like to add to yeah. the whole thing. You know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we don't have too much time, man, but I just want to say we're very grateful... Mm -hmm. I mean, you've said everything in a yes, nutshell, you yes. know, about getting comedians to that next level. Mm. And we have to make sure young comedians and entertainers mm. appreciate this guy exactly. some more. And here at MX24, we're going to make sure that happens. We're going to make sure that happens. Thank you so much. Before you Don't go, where can we find you on social media? Very quickly, my brother. I'm everywhere. You know, my videos are on my, my YouTube channel. Look, just search for David Oscar Dogbe. Okay. David Oscar Dogbe. Okay. Put that in Google and all my things will pop up. My nice Spotify, time. my Apple, everywhere yeah. you can find me. Just search for David Oscar Dogbe. That's all. Yeah. That's all I can say. Thank you so much for talking to us, man. God bless you. Um, I'm coming there, wherever you are. You're not in Ghana, <laughs> but I'm coming there, man. That sure, was, sure, um, sure, sure. Yeah, that was David Oscar. We just spoke to via Zoom. And